Okay, so it was like 60 seconds into this film and my mouth is like, and it just kept going that way the whole time. Hello everybody and welcome back to A Slice, A Dice, A Spice Movie Reviews. Today we're going to be talking about what has the internet a buzz, okay? And that is long legs. Now here's the thing before we even get into it. Y'all, this is going to be, I don't know if cryptic, I don't know if like secretive review i don't know how you say it because there's so much of it that for me you need to go in like not knowing anything about it i didn't even watch a trailer going into this i just saw i read the blurb and like oh it's about this serial killer thing oh well, pff, sign me up you know harm maybe still good please i went into it like that so i completely unknown to it and I suggest doing that yourself. So what I mean by that is I'm not going to even like talk about like some of the main characters a lot because the less you know about them, the better it will be. So now that being said, if you don't want to know anything about this film, okay, then don't be watching all this. Okay. But if you do watch it and then let me know what you think in the comment sections, try not to be too spoiler ish in there maybe do like a spoiler you know alert or whatever if you're going to put some kind of spoiler alert thing in there um so that's it so what i want to do first is go to the imdb page let's look at that and then go from there now i'm just going to put the little screenshot up here i'm reading from my stuff right here it says in pursuit of a serial killer an fbi agent uncovers a series of occult clues that she must solve to end his terrifying killer killing spree director oz perkins writer oz perkins stars Maika Monroe, Nicolas Cage, and Blair Underwood. Okay, so let's pause right there real quick and let's talk about two of the main actors, actresses that we see, and that would be Maika and Blair Underwood. So let's talk about them and their characters for a little bit. So Maika plays Agent Harker. Now this is giving Silence of the Lambs Jodie Foster, right? This kind of energy. Now Detective Harker or FBI agent Lee Harker is intuitive to some levels so that does play into this. So she brings that vibe with it. Her personality is such that there's a mysteriousness to it because she's very flat, no real emotion. And it almost makes you wonder like, is you know maybe she on the spectrum or you're questioning where this is coming from. And it helps to add to the ominous, like desolate thud of this movie that is just held throughout it, right? Because you're you're constantly searching for clues, whether it be through the characters, through the story, through the, the scenery, whatever, and this is one of them. Now, I don't want to go into that too much because it does play into some plot points, but just know that that's the vibe going on with her. Now, she does have a boss, and again, it gives that same energy that we saw in like Silence of the Lambs with Jody going to her bosses, am I going to be taken serious, this type stuff. And her boss is played by Blair Underwood. Now, Blair does play this kind of role like, how would you even say it? Um, negative, but not negative. Here it is, and this is what it's going to be, and ba 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 ba. You know, just that kind of dude. Giving her a hard time, but giving her a chance that type of energy he's facilitating the story along obviously to the case and whatnot and uh, there's that so he will play a prominent role in the movie now yes nicholas cage is in this nicholas cage's performance is amazing it is otherworldly i did not even know that it was nicholas cage and we're just going to leave it at that okay Okay. Now, for people who are into like kind of FBI procedural type novels or books, things like that, you're going to like this because it has that energy. Again, it's very, you know, it's been compared to Seven. It's been compared to Silence of the Lambs, and these are accurate. I will say, in my opinion, if I had to sit here and put on a threshold, Silence of the Lambs, long legs. Silence of the Lambs is way up here, right, as far as quality overall. Long legs isn't like it doesn't compare but it's, they're not on the same level as what I'm getting at. And so just know that going into it. Now for true crime fans, which most of you probably watching this video have come from my other channel and probably are, you're gonna see some recognizable things in this, like to the Zodiac and killer and things of that nature, which will be of interest to you. It's really one of the reasons why when I just read the blurb and was like, it was a serial killer and this, that, and the other, and I was like, sold, done, let's go. Let's talk for a moment about the atmosphere. One of the things that absolutely pulls me into a film is the way it's filmed. That kind of grainy, 
almost like it was truly filmed in the time frame, right? And this feels like that. Now, I don't know if they use filters and stuff like that. Maxine was the same way. It felt like a true 80s flick, like filmed on technology back then. This has that same kind of feeling. The atmosphere of this is this like aloneness, this desolateness. It's the middle of winter with a lone cabin on a plane in Idaho kind of vibe, right? But I mean, that wasn't that, but just trying to get a little bit of a vibe going there. You're not going to see scenes with tons of people in them. You're not going to see lots of busyness. You're not going to see lots of color. You're going to see very subdued, very quiet, very ominous, very you know, kind of vibes in the scenery and it works. It starts off from the very beginning and it carries through to the whole thing where you're just like, oh my gosh. It's almost like it adds to the sense of claustrophobia for me at least. Now, another thing about the film is jump scares. And is it scary? Like that's why we're there, right? This is different. Like I said, there's a, right off the rub, there's some things that have me like, what, what have I just signed up for? Uh, but in a good way. And it carries throughout, but there is a sense of dread in this film that is what stuck with me and if i compared it to things i've seen recently day one maxine yeah they were scary yeah they had jump scares this is different this is this foreboding sense of doom that just starts off immediately and somehow the director pulls you into that and it works okay so that part is amazing this is one of those things where you literally are part of the thing where you're trying to figure out, huh, what, when, where, but you start off kind of knowing a chunk of the information, which turns it upside down in its head for you. So it's different than a lot of horror films. Now, let's get to the most controversial part of the whole thing, at least in my opinion, and that is the ending. Now, I'm not gonna talk about the ending, okay? But I'm just gonna say this is one of the things that divides people in the room, right? To the left or the right about how you feel about the ending. And I'm just gonna say this, and I'll probably wait till like the comments to really have this conversation. I did not appreciate the ending and such that I like there to be a little more mystery. I don't need everything explained to me. However, the way this story unfolded, they almost had to. Um, it felt like a little bit of an information dump at the end, which for me feels like they didn't do their job throughout the film because they had to do that. For me, a film is like, you shouldn't have to tell me everything at the end. That should have been done and some nuances along the way to leave me guessing and leave a little bit of mystery. So when they did this, it was almost like, I'm going to tell you what this was about instead of letting me arrive there. And so, again, I'm very curious to know what your opinions were in the ending because that's the most, when I read people's comments, all this stuff, that's the biggest thing that divides people. Um... And really, I'm going to leave this at that because there's so much of it I don't really want to talk about because if you talk about it, it leads into it. And I think I've talked enough about it. Like, yes, the atmosphere, amazing. The acting, awesome. Um, the general idea of it, different. I haven't seen something like this really. Yes, it feels like Silence of the Lambs. Yes, it feels like Seven. Yes, it feels like this character over here. That kind of thing right there. Um, so it's very different and fresh. I, my only complaint is the ending. You know, I just had some issues with it. But again, I'll probably watch it again. Let's put it this way. When it's like at home, watch it again to dissect it more. And that right there is when a film does its job. It's making me talk about it. It's making me want to watch it again. It's making me want to dissect. So that is it. If you have seen it, let me know what you think down, down below. We're going to give it a slice of spice and a half a dice, okay? Because that ending threw me off a little bit. What does that rating system mean? I don't know, I just made it up. <laughs> I'm just winging it every time I do one of these. Okay, so we don't know, we just kind of make it up as we go, but let me know what you thought if you saw it down in the comment section. And that's it, so I do appreciate it. Drop your comments down in the comment section below, and until we gather down there to talk about this and all the other crazy movies we talk about here, I'll see y'all soon.